The judges have finished their judging, and most of you probably have been here before and know about the edible book. I've said it so many times I don't remember now, but <laughs> it all started with some uh, book artists in California, uh, Judith Holmberg, and um, they're, they're book artists and they were sitting around the dining room table at Thanksgiving time and decided to make this event up. And uh, it's, it's pretty international. I brought it to the library because it made sense to have it be a library thing. And Dee and, and I do it and we love it. <laughs> uh, so, in, and when they were sitting around the table, they decided to uh, dedicate it to a certain French person that wrote about food. And his name was Anthony Brillant Savarin. Close enough. And, <laughs> And he wrote a book called The Physiology of Taste. So it's pretty academic, but um, his birthday's on April 1st, and we should do this always around the beginning of April, but we changed it this year and did it in May. But I don't think he mind, as long as we're doing it. <laughs> so, yeah, 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 he's long gone. So, um, we're gonna go around, where are we gonna start, D? Um, and the judges have judged, so, Maybe some of you know her. She used to, she used to be the, um, she's retired now, but she was the, um, on the board of the Friends, the president of the Friends of Forbes Library, but she also was the, was the librarian at the JFK Middle School, and Rochelle Pr Prouty, Prouty. Uh, she, you were the Prouty. name, Prouty. She is the manager, I believe, of the River Valley Market um, up on King Street, so that's a, that's a food thing. That's right. We, we'd like to hear from each creator or group of creators as we go around and talk about each book um, or each presentation. Uh, and, and I believe that Bonnie has got the awards. We got a variety. <laughs> so number one, uh, the book was The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. And we are giving that the most mysterious award. <laughs> My daughter Ryan created this. My daughter Ryan created this. She's actually working at Jones Library right now. She tried to make a three-dimensional house, but then we, she had struggles. But so then she focused on the door. She has a special cookie cutter for the door of her own home, which she knows the number. What is it? Two two one Baker Street. Famous address. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so this next one gets the award. This one is Anastasia Krupnik, and this is a series. And each of these cupcakes has some symbolism specific to some key items in, in each of the books. And they're nicely labeled, nicely illustrated. Um, we want to give this one the award for the most well researched. <laughs> Congratulations. You want to say a few things about it? Sure. Thank you. Uh, um, first off, this is a really wonderful series, and I recommend everybody read it. Um, so there are nine books in the series, all featuring Anastasia Krupnik, who starts out as 10, I think in the last book is 14. Um, so this one is just an introduction to her. In this one, they move into a house that has a tower. Um, in this one, she uh, works as a servant in a house. Um, this is a bust of Freud that she uses as her psychiatrist throughout the book. This is a representation of the Krupnik household non-sexist housekeeping schedule. <laughs> this is a, a rope and a whistle. She has trouble climbing the rope in gym. Um, in this one, she decides to be a model, takes modeling classes. In this one, she um, 
writes to a personals ad and tells someone that she has a sloop. <laughs> and in this one, she accidentally puts a dog, a uh, bag full of dog poop into a mailbox. <laughs> <laughs> by Janet Molding. She's the director of Forbes Library. Uh, and Janet is not here to talk about it, unfortunately. But we uh, thought it was very interesting that she layered the lemons and then created tire tracks over the lemons with cocoa. And they really do look like tire tracks. And so that's why we thought it was the most literal interpretation. Okay, so this next one, um, we went around about what to call this one. Uh, the book is Eight Hands Round, a patchwork alphabet. And uh, they looked at this a few times, and you know, I wanted to give it the, uh, the uh, uh, sneakiest use of uh, Star Trek imagery award. <laughs> You see the, uh, I can't do it. Live long and prosper. Live long and prosper. That's, who did this one? Are you here? Live long and prosper? Is it? Um, but we, uh, uh, so we're giving this the uh, award, the live long and prosper and read award. <laughs> nice. Nicely done. You want to talk about it? Um, sure. So, this unfolded. <laughs> um, I just saw the book on our bookshelf and I thought, you know, it just, it just kind of spoke to me. So um, at first I was going to do these letters as sandwiches and that didn't work. Um, I like the idea, but that didn't work. And um, we did have another hand uh, that I could have used, but I decided that I liked this one better. The next book depiction is called The Green Man. And given the season right now and um, wonderful recipes that you can find uh, about using fiddleheads, but we never saw one like this before. So we call, we're calling this the best use of fiddleheads award. <laughs> I did it my way. Uh, this is a collaboration between me and my wife, Patty. We've been doing this for a number of years. Um, it's really good to have somebody else so that you don't feel totally insane when you start making this. So, you know, she came up with the mustache, so I'm, I'm not totally crazy. Uh, this is uh, the Green Man's beard, and his eyes are kiwi fruit and avocado. And uh, ginger are his antlers because the green man was a wild man who lived out in the forest. And uh, it's kind of a myth from the Middle Ages of uh, a representation of vegetation and nature, probably left over from the Druids we were talking about earlier, and survived into the Christian era as a motif in architecture. So a lot of medieval architecture has the green man, kind of a, uh, a, a gargoyle kind of face. But um, yeah, this is all made from uh, the collard greens in the back, in case you want to make it yourself. You know, you know. <laughs> collard greens, ginger, avocado, bell pepper, and snap peas are the lips. So the next entry is the Lorax. 
Um, and this one is very dramatic, a little ominous, um, and uh, we think there's a lot of uh, environmentally conscious uh, thought into this, and it looks a little looks a little like like what happened to those trees in the front. Um, so we're giving this one award for the most environmentally conscious confection. Oh. Does the artist want to say a few words? You want to talk about it? Would you like me to say something about it? Okay. There you go, Emma. Oh. Here's your thing. You sure you don't want to say anything about it? So Emma came up with the idea of the Lorax, and immediately we thought about a sweet potato for his body. And there was a lot of thought put into the truffula trees. And we went through a lot of different ideas and wished we'd found some cotton candy at Pride yesterday, but we didn't. So we went with marshmallows and dyed them. Um, anything else you want to say? No. All right. So that's the Lorax. Most environmentally conscious. The next presentation that we looked at was the Lord of the Flies. And that, this one is just amazing. The wings we couldn't get over. And we are calling this the Most Royal and Creative Award. And where is the artist? I, um, my daughter did this last year and she's over there and it was so much fun so I had to get involved. And I, I thought of this like on the way home last year. <laughs> I was so excited. Um, so he's just very littler, literal of the title. And there's the Lord, the King, and his little minions, and the little future flies, which is, well, I wasn't going to say that. <laughs> future flies. Um, they're jelly beans, though, so it's okay to eat them. And we're looking forward to next year. <laughs> Already we're in the library looking at books, seeing oh, what we could do. That's great. Thank you. Nice work. Okay, this next one, That's what I was calling them. It's this one, the uh, Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King, um, and this one gets the prize, it's the most precious. <laughs> Good job. You want to talk about it? Well, after thinking about a bunch of different ideas, we came up with this one. And uh, oddly enough, it's after the Lord of the Flies. <laughs> we have the Lord of the Rings. So, yeah, it's a, um, a white chocolate hand, so it's edible. Um, black forest cake. Black forest cake. And. A uh, topping of what do we put on there? Cherry Sorry. preserves, of course. And um, yeah, luckily nothing broke. Um, it's wobbly on the way over here, <laughs> but luckily it came out broke. Yeah, pretty awesome. That's about it. Yeah, enjoy. And yeah, whoever um, has the hand, I'm gonna make sure that you're there when you when you eat it. <laughs> it's like, when do you get to eat it? Man, yeah. enjoy. <laughs> Um, and beware the ring of doom. It is made out of lemon rind, so evil will be sour. <laughs> yeah, I don't need that. <laughs> <laughs> Most precious. <laughs> okay. The next entry is called The Lunch Lady. And we thought, after much determination, this should get the happiest creation. <laughs> because 
the lunch lady looks very happy. And we'd like to hope that the lunch ladies in your lives are happy people that you see every day at school. So congratulations. For the lunch lady, is there someone who would like to speak about? Um, thank you. Um, me and my friends got this idea from the lunch lady series. Um, it kind of melted in the way here. <laughs> it was supposed to be a little higher. Um, um, yeah, it's kind of a last minute thing, so. It's <laughs> good. Talk about the hair. Talk about the hair. Uh, the hair is, what is it? Fruit leather? Fruit roll-up. Um, oh, roll pickle oh, eyes, oh. sandwich, and pretzel little body. Okay. What about the pupils? Uh, those are toothpicks. <laughs> but one thing that aren't edible. Uh -huh. Ow. Ow. The malt cheese falcon, um, and uh, this one uh, you see the easy cheese there in the background. A little hint. Um, it's made with a variety of cheeses: American singles, um, uh, Nabisco sharp cheddar, easy cheese, um, and there is a uh, milk chocolate malted ball in the eye. Very nice, nice. So. Um, we uh, we'll call this this award for the uh, cheesiest illustration. <laughs> Congratulations! <laughs> Fantastic. Well, I I picked this book because it's part of the All Hamptons Read this year. Um, the libraries in the valley get together northeast, west, and south Hampton, and they picked the Maltese Falcon this year. There was a showing of the movie and community has been discussing the book. And originally my idea was the Malted Falcon, and then a friend of mine who's a, lang a language play punster who was visiting a couple of weeks ago said he could make it even better by making it malt cheese. And originally it was going to be a cake with malt powder and Parmesan cheese on top, which sounded really disgusting. <laughs> um, so then we thought if we, we could just make it of cheese, it would at least be somewhat edible. And the, the artwork uh, was actually was done by Scott. The, um, the detail. Uh, I, I found a, online I found a drawing of the statuette from the movie. So this looks like the Maltese Falcon from the movie version. Um. Well done. Thank well done. you. Uh, contestant number 11, the Maze Runner, is the total, is the title of her book. And we just stood over this for a long time looking at it. We thought that the broccoli was so cool to make a forest out of broccoli. So we gave this the most amazing <laughs> broccoli forest award. Me and my brothers worked together to make a cake for the book, The Maze Runner. We chose this because we recently listened to the soundtrack, and yeah. <laughs> Me and my dad started a movie. Um, <laughs> we made it out of cake. <laughs> And brownies and graham crackers and frosting. <laughs> and old crackers, pretzels, and broccoli. <laughs> and sour patch kids. Um, yeah, we'll see if my This one is just beautiful. The ribbons of, of frosting and the the box and the detail on the design on the bonbon box. Um, so we want to give this one the award as having the being the most realistic presentation. Oh. <laughs> Nicely done. Thank you. And we like this 
story and first we wanted to make chitty chitty bang bang of course a car and I had to do research I hadn't seen the movie so I found it seems everybody makes the same car and I thought that was I didn't want to copy that and try that when thousands of people did that before so the book has a nice secret recipe for fudge or fudge and we decided to make a nice box of fudge instead. So we made the fudge in our house and we made a cake box covered in fondant. The next entry is from a book called The Patchwork Planner. And we saw a very creative use of grains and pattern. And we are giving an award for the best use of pattern to this book. Congratulations. Oh, thank, you. thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I met an artist last year who uses quilt patterns as a basis for her metal sculpture. And that's what got me thinking about using quilt patterns with food. So I found a number of flat, cuttable food items and arranged them in one of the quilt patterns. And that's what we've got. Thank you. Um, this one, I actually had the honor to talk to the artist a little bit. Um, you know, there's a, a, a lot going on here. Um, uh, the, the frogs, those are really big frogs chasing the beaver. Um, kind of scary. Um, they eat a lot of flies. <laughs> yeah, and they, they take care of the flies. Um, there's, uh, this one gets the Busy Beaver Award. <laughs> and there's so much going on in the Well done. You want to say a few words? So, first of all, I can't take all the credit because of these fishes over here. My friend and Nina made them. Oh, wow. That's him right there. Aww. And also, um, well, I didn't know what to do at first, and so I was like thinking about books, and then I started thinking about the books I was reading at school, and then I had a book group where I had a sign with me, so I was like, why not? <laughs> book entry was The Silence of the Lambs. And I haven't in my life seen very many lambs that didn't evoke cuddle, <laughs> cuddle desires and wanting to hug them. But this lamb, well, it's very creatively done, but we are giving this the award for the entry most likely to produce nightmares. <laughs> Okay, so this is Dr. Hannah Ba Lecter in his field, and he's surrounded by Buffalo Bill's trademark lotion and hose. And if he gives you nightmares, just turn away. <laughs> Thank you and congratulations. The Tale of Desperu. This one, lovely, lovely uh, uh, book here. Um, we're giving it the award for the best tail. You pick how to spell it. T A L E T A I L. Nicely done. Thank you. So, first off, give it to your sister, honey. So, first off, um, my only co contribution to this was the brownie part. That was really only my idea. And then my sister over here just takes all the credit. Here you go. So, 
So we made the um, book cover out of brownies, out of the pages out of uh, sandwich wraps, and the mouse is made out of marzipan, and I think that was the funnest part to make, because you got to mold it in whatever way you wanted. And I got to eat some. We got to eat some. What's the tail made out of? The tail is made out of black licorice. The next entry is called Warren Buffett Picks Stocks. S or Warren Buffett Stock Picks, S T O C K, so it's a great play on words. And we are awarding this the healthiest. Stocks. S T A L K S. Congratulations. Alicia, is Alicia here? Alicia Al? Oh, Oh. See, so where's the cat? Um, so this one gets the award for. The best use of camouflage and trickery. Mm. Nice work. <laughs> My mother wrote kids' books, and one year somebody did um, Ten Rosy Roses of hers, and I did the um, How to Eat a Poem, which was a poem of hers a couple of years ago. It was refrigerator magnets. I was looking at my shelf of books for something simple, and where's that cat? I thought it was, since I had a lot of animal cookie cutters, I could just make different cookies, one which was a cat. And then it seemed too easy to identify the cat, so I put a bunch of camouflage it, so that would make it trickier. And um, my friend Zach, who was visiting a week ago, found this recipe online for a sponge cake with different colors that you could make different patterns out of for animal leopard cake and things like that. So that's what I ended up doing, just to make it a little harder to find. And then I found some books in the library on animal camouflage, so it's uh, works for both of us. Nice. Anita. Yeah. is from the book Wicked. Oh, yeah. And as we see the roof caved in here, we thought that this deserved the best depiction of deconstructed architecture. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> is the artist here? That's a good point, because in that story, both Wizard of Oz and Wicked, the, the house remains intact, but I thought that that was silly, so I just cut it out. Thank you. Nice. Okay. This next book, Winnie the Pooh. Who, who hasn't read Winnie the Pooh? Ah, <laughs> uh, what a what a what a great honey pot! This is just gorgeous. Um, uh, little bees on that, and the the jar, like you know, who is like? I don't know how you kept his head out of there this whole time. Um, this this one gets the award for the sweetest buzz, creating the sweetest buzz. Congratulations. Hours 
So the top is sort of like in the olden days with like cheesecloth draped over jars, so it's fondant. Um, and then the backwards add on pot um, because it's always in the books spelled wrong. So Pooh doesn't isn't very smart. Um, and he loves honey, so we just went with that. The next entry is right here, and it's the book called The Wonder Boys, and we have a cake-like depiction of a loaf of Wonder Bread, and some wonderful little dough boys. So we are giving this the award, The Most Wonderful Dough Boys. Congratulations. Is the artist here? Great, thank you. Um, I only did this, Michael Chabon is one of my favorite authors. I've had a crush on him for years. And it was really fun making, the only time I've ever used cookie cutters with bread. So that was really fun. <laughs> and it must have been a challenge, awesome. Okay, we have one. And it is glazed, the cake is glazed lemon thyme th. I'm sorry, T-H-Y-M-E, thyme, thyme, wrinkle in thyme, thyme cake. Um, so this one gets the award for the best use of puns. Congratulations. This is my first year here. Um, and there's a bunch of reasons why I chose this book. But one of them is that I tried to come last year and I showed it at four because I got the time wrong. <laughs> Perfect award for you. <laughs> all right. We made it all the way around. Are we ready to ready to cut the? Is it time? <laughs> 